Hey, Steve Mignani here doing a junkyard crawl at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts. Does anybody remember the Chevrolet Geo subdivision? Active between 1989 and 1997, nine model years. Of course, the Geo Tracker, the Geo Prism, and the Geo Metrum were the three vehicles that were part of that whole picture. Now, the Prism and the Metro and the Tracker were smaller. They were subcompact vehicles, but in particular, the smallest of the batch was the Metro, which was available as a two-door hatchback or a convertible, or in Canada, believe it or not, a four-door sedan on a tiny little wheelbase like that. Now, the thing is, when these cars were launched in 1989, GM used a, a campaign that said, get to know Geo. And they actually used the song from the 1951 Rodgers and Hammerstein movie, The King and I, getting to know you. Well, I remember seeing those ads. Well, somebody got to know these two Geos pretty well and, well, has had enough of them. But this one is a convertible, pretty unusual bird. And let's take a quick look around. Now, these are all front-wheel drive. Before we get to the engine, the thing that makes this special is this right here. The top folds back. And usually, convertibles are reserved for, you know, Camaros, Corvettes, you know, sexier cars. But believe it or not, there was a market for subcompact cars that were convertible-based. Now, these here weighed 1,753 pounds, 1,753, which is 173 pounds more than this coupe. And it's kind of ironic. The coupes ran a five inch longer wheelbase, 102 inches versus 88 on, uh, or sorry, 92 inches versus 88 on the little two seater. And uh, so they were very similar in some ways. And that was basically under the hood. Now here we have the front of this thing. Let's take a peek and see what we got. And again, as always, these are front wheel drive. And this is a uh, three cylinder engine right here. It's a one liter single overhead cam. There's the belt, there's the cam. And this one has air conditioning. And I, I was reading about these and Consumer Reports said the air conditioning was a safety feature because when the air conditioner is on, the 55 horsepower gets drawn so severely that the car slows down and can't go over 65. Uh, kind of crazy. Now, air conditioned cars also have this, this little fan right here, which uh, is metal. It has a, a screen on it, and this blows air through the air conditioner condenser, which we can see behind it. Here's the air conditioned equipment. The fan itself for the engine, here's the radiator, this tiny little mi microscopic asymmetrical radiator, and here's the electric fan for that. So two fans, but again, only the AC cars have this passenger side extra fan. Let's look inside underneath here, and yeah, there's a nice fresh uh, filter. That's kind of sweet, but that is the one one barrel electronic fuel injected throttle body right underneath here. And again, 55 horsepower. Now, if you remember back in the 80s, before these things came along, there's a thing called the Chevy Sprint. And there's also a thing called the Chevy Turbo Sprint. Same basic engine, one liter, three cylinders with 72 horsepower, thanks to the turbocharger versus 55 from this naturally aspirated one. But something kind of weird here is this, this blue device. This is a Jacobs coil. Jacobs Electronics was for a while playing along with MSD back in the 80s and 90s. But Jacobs, somebody added a Jacobs coil and, uh, amplifier right down there, that blue thing. But again, Jacobs Electronics was once a, uh, a pretty major player in the aftermarket electronic ignition game. But uh, again, this is, uh, you know, this is basically the same guts as the Mitsubishi uh, Celtus. Uh, and of course, the uh, Chevy Sprint, which came before. But again, these were built between 89 and 97. Now this one here is a two-door hatchback, same basic engine, but we'll see here, this one does not have air conditioning. And instead of the fan and condenser, has a metal block off plate right here. This is where the fan and grating would go on the AC equipped car. But it does have the same uh, asymmetrical radiator with the electric fan. So it's interesting how, you know, the same basic package can be, um, sort of uh, added and deleted from, but same basic one barrel, uh, same three cylinder, one liter, 55 horsepower engine. But again, this rides on a five inch longer wheelbase, uh, 92 inches versus uh, 88. And that's all about this, the back seat we see right here. You can fold up that back seat right there and you can actually sit two adults, maybe even three. Oh, nice to, an to answer having dinner. That's cool, good to see that. But again, uh, it's, uh, this is the hatchback. And in Canada, yeah, they sold four door sedans. It was a notchback with a trunk. But with that said, can you imagine one of these things with uh, four doors only in Canada? Now these were built in Canada or Japan. And we go back to this here. We see here the uh, Kami Automotive Incorporated. Now these are supposedly Suzuki's, right? Well, 
Cami is Canadian Automotive Manufacturing Incorporated. Yep, made in Canada, but that's only the hatchbacks and the sedans. By contrast, the convertibles were made at the Suzuki Home Factory. And we can see right there that blue tag, again, only on convertibles. Right there, that's all about the Japanese origin of the convertible versions. So this is a uh, you know, interesting little car. The back seat on this puppy, well, there isn't one. Let's move that seat forward and have a look. Let me do this real quick. And there is the uh, area in the back. Now this is a two-seater, so a fairly sporty little car. Base price on this was about $7,100 or 400 bucks more than a hatchback. And it's kind of cool to see right there the original Geo cassette player radio right there with the Geo logo in the cassette slot. Uh, rewind capability, but in the dash itself, that must have misbehaved because there's an aftermarket CD player that's been added here. So um, 85 mile an hour speedometer on these things. These were not fast by any stretch. And again, with the air conditioner in place and running right here, the AC, top speed was literally about 70 miles per hour because the engine was basically saddled. Now this is kind of cool. This car, somebody was taking it seriously. This is a quarter a rocker panel right here that is, uh, here it is right here, a Clockwork Home Suzuki Swift Cultus. This is a quarter panel, or sorry, a rocker panel that somebody was going to weld in. Uh, we can see this car has a fair amount of rust, but these are fairly rare cars. Are they gonna be collectible? I don't know. Something like 6,500 of these were made in 1993. And again, only three years, 92, 93, and 94 for the uh, Metro convertible, which is kind of the pinnacle, the halo model, if you will. And so restoring one of these, I don't know, but these have been sort of compared to the Nash Metropolitan of the 1950s. They also had 55 horsepower. They also maxed out at about 75 miles an hour if you were on a good day. And they were also two seaters, kind of like this. So some have said that the, the, Mitsu, the Mitsubishi or the uh, Metro by, uh, by Geo is today's Nash Metropolitan. I dare say the smart car is today's Nash Metropolitan. They have a rear wheel drive, uh, three cylinder engine still. And it's a Mitsubishi three cylinder engine on the smart car. Different creature altogether, but similar mission statement. So that's the story on the Metro Twins, uh, the convertible made in Japan, the hatchback and sedan made in Canada. If you like this story and you want to see more videos from the junkyard, well, be sure to subscribe to Steve Mag's YouTube channel.